of the most powerful approaches to teaching history, to understanding the past, is the ability to reanimate things that have already happened and to be able to see those, those trends and those changes and those perspectives. Uh, 15 years ago, that meant having access to the puzzle pieces of the past, the primary sources, the documents, the archives, the things that professionals only had access to. Technology is an amplifier of what happens in the classroom. If it's used well, it amplifies the educational process. If it's used poorly, it amplifies the distraction and it amplifies the problems that are going on. But good teachers using good technology can do amazing things. There is definitely a gap between what students do in the class with papers and books and then technology. You need to bridge that gap somehow so that it flows in some sort of cohesive manner. Before the technologies like OneNote and ChronoZoom, collaborating on group projects was very difficult and the technology was not as seamless. For example, we'd be sending back and forth presentations or notes or passing around paper notes and it just was very difficult to collaborate and have everyone contribute to the project. By doing this in our school, in our school setting, I think that you can not only learn from yourself and what you can do with technology, but you can also learn what other people can use and do with technology. The most valuable litmus test for technology in the classroom is whether or not it allows teachers to do something they couldn't do otherwise. Software like OneNote and ChronoZoom enable kinds of collaboration, presentation, project-oriented learning that haven't been possible before the use of these technologies. I am not a uh, techie person, and I was able to successfully use ChronoZoom in my school, which is very limited technology. I have one computer in my classroom. We have computer labs, but they're very hard to get to because everyone wants to be in the computer lab. Given those facts that I'm not techie and very limited in technology here at my school, I was able to implement ChronoZoom very well in my classroom because of its simplicity, how easy it is to use, and because it speaks for itself in terms of what it shows, what it presents, and what students get out of it. Getting ChronoZoom up and running is really as easy as opening a browser. Um, because it's a web-based application, there's no, nothing to install, there is no question of hardware compatibility. I think the um, initial reaction to ChronoZoom of my teachers has been, whoa, because of the initial fly-through which in a sense captures the notion of big history. When I first saw it and saw the zoom from the view of the whole cosmos down, 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 down into the view of humanity, I realized right then it was a magnificent tool for giving perspective in a way that you can't see otherwise about the temporal relationship between things. Tools like ChronoZoom allow us um, students teachers, practitioners, scholars to essentially take huge piles of data and create um, understandings of what that data might, might show us and tell us from the past. It's a presentational tool. It can be used very quickly by a teacher to present. It can also be used by students to develop their own presentations, but it also is one of those kind of tools that is scalable. When I saw ChronoZoom, I couldn't wait to have my students build timelines. I designed a project in which they had to research a world religion or philosophy, conduct research, create a storyboard on a OneNote notebook, and then build a timeline in ChronoZoom. In my world history class right now, I'm using it to present about the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And so I just created a tour that I'm going to be presenting my whole class. Um, and it was really interesting to use the tour because it kind of does the presentation for you. You put the information in and you put the pictures in and then it takes you or it takes the class through it and that's really, really helpful when presenting. One thing I always tell my students is that history is messy and chaotic. And what ChronoZoom does is it allows me to visually show my students um, history and it shows them that mess but in an organized manner. ChronoZoom reminds me of a tree because it's like the main branch splits off into tiny little intro buds that each contribute to the main purpose. It's a wonderful tool because it has not only text information, but it has pictures and videos that you can look at to help you visualize information more. ChronoZoom gave me the opportunity to place um, timelines into the hands of students that they not only got to see the progression of 
things changing and staying the same, but they also got to interact with history. So ChronoZoom, what it does is it teaches chronology, it allows students to visualize history, and it also teaches cause and effect. Usually in my regular history classes, we would just learn this happened and this happened and this happened. But with ChronoZoom and Ms. Shires, she shows us that each event doesn't just happen like that. Events actually overlap, and one thing might happen at the same time this thing has happened. You can zoom in into different boxes, and it's just like different layers that you can go into. It's like going through a book of history, just turning the pages and turning the pages until you get to the part that you want to read. ChronoZoom has forced me to really look at why dates are important and why things are centered in time and cause and effect and how that relates to other timelines of history. ChronoZoom changed the way that I view history or think about history because the importance of ChronoZoom is tying the subject at hand to a date. So tying the political structure of the Austro-Hungarian Empire to a specific date has really helped me learn about it better because I've had to connect it with a certain point in history. Because we take full advantage of the tablet PCs that we have, a lot of times those projects aren't shareable outside the school because the people our students want to share those projects with may not have tablet PCs. ChronoZoom fills a really unique niche for us, however, because it brings some great capabilities, but it's also something that they can share with grandma who may be running on her old Windows machine. Uh, when I showed ChronoZoom to my parents, they were really, you know, surprised by it, about how new it is, because they were like, oh, you're not just, you know, making this project by yourself, you actually have a format to work on. And they were really interested, again, with the timelines and the exhibits and the tours that you can take. To another student who is about to use ChronoZoom, I would recommend not limiting themselves in what they can present with ChronoZoom. For example, don't just think that um, because you have to tie something to a specific date in history, you can only focus on that event. There's so much you can connect to that event and present through ChronoZoom, and it's really beneficial to know that. This is the future of technology in the classroom. Natural interfaces like pen and touch, collaborative software like OneNote, innovative software like ChronoZoom that allows you to do presentations and put information together in ways you couldn't in the past.